Hello, everybody, and welcome. We're really excited that you are here and interested in career services and how you can help support your student uh, as they navigate the, their career as a student, but then also start thinking about what their career will be post-graduation. I'm really excited that here in the, our discussion today, I've got several members of the career services staff, as well as one of our colleagues who who does a lot with student services, and I want her to talk about her project as well. I'm gonna let everybody introduce themselves uh, briefly before we get started. My name is Tess Surprenant, and I am the director of the Block Career Center, which serves the students, undergraduates and graduate students within the Block Business School. And I am also the interim director of the UMKC Career Services. So I'm really lucky in that I get to, to work with students all across the campus. So Daniel, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Daniel Folk and I'm with UMKC's Career Services. And my primary role is I'm a career counselor. I do my best to get in front of as many students as possible, having appointments, doing classroom presentations, and ultimately just helping students get where they want to be in life. That's my goal. Great. And, and Allison, how about you? Uh, basically the same. So I'm the career coach for um, our central office as well. Um, and so a lot of what I do is very similar to Daniel. Um, the whole focus is on student professional development, engagement. Um, and I also trickle in some of our uh, marketing and our podcast as well. So that's been really fun, fun project for us. And, and Brittany, why don't you tell the, the audience what you do? Sure, I am the program manager for Block Launchpad. We are a professional and scholarship program within the Block School. And um, I largely work with some really highly engaged students as they kind of maneuver how to, how to get to the career that they really want to get to. Fabulous. I love the Launchpad program. It's so fun and exciting. So, Allison, I think you have some questions for us. Oh, I have tons of questions. All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah. We're all supposed to say yeah at one time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> first question is for Daniel and Tess. Can you both review the services offered for your students and alumni? Yeah, and I would love to start. Um, I want to focus on starting with, I like that you added alumni to that because part of what we emphasize is that we serve current students as well as alumni. So from here until forever, uh, your student is our student in career services. In thinking about that career development, if it involves careers, we want to talk about it. We want to help your student get where they want to be in life. So whether that's your documentation, so resumes, cover letters, personal statements, we're here to help. Uh, or career exploration, maybe they know exactly what they want to study now, but they don't know what all they can do with it. Or vice versa, they know what they want to do, but don't know what, what how to get there. We want to help talk about that. So we also provide a lot of resources for helping your student get where they want to be throughout our resources section within our platform Handshake. Fabulous. And I'll just add to that, uh, the Block Career Center does a lot of the same programming and services. Um, we, we, throughout the, the campus, throughout both offices, we put a big emphasis also on getting the students connected with employers in the community, in the region, and really even across the country and around the world. So we want to make sure that not only do students have all of the skills and training to, to have that perfect resume or write a great cover letter or do a great job interviewing, but we want to make sure that, that they're meeting these employers who are going to be hiring them for internships and full-time jobs also. So um, big emphasis on the, the networking and the engagement piece. So. Awesome. All right. So piggybacking off of that, why should students come see the career services team early and often throughout their uh, time here at UMKC? So there's an article that I love to quote. Uh, Tess taught it to me and now I use it in almost every presentation I talk about, but um, in studying schools or students who utilize their career centers early and often, 
it showed that students who utilize their career center throughout their college experience, not just as a junior and not just as a senior, but throughout that experience, they graduated with more job offers, higher starting salaries, and overall higher job satisfaction. So I think that answers the question in and of itself, but the primary reason is we don't want students to miss opportunities. We want them to start early so that way they're ready for every opportunity that comes their way throughout that college experience. Awesome. All right. So we recently found that there was a lower number of students campus wide who chose to take a professional experiential learning opportunity, such as an internship or practicum. Can someone or a couple of someones uh, speak to why internships and like experiences are so important before graduating? I'll, I'll take this one because I think sometimes students um, don't place as much emphasis on internships and this practical experience as employers do. Um, and the, the, one of the things that, that you need to think about when you're looking at should I do an internship or not, is that so many employers use this internship as sort of its, its testing pool for who they're going to hire for full-time positions. And so they hire their interns with the hope that they'll convert that intern to a full-time hire. So if you don't get the internship, sometimes it's a lot harder to get that full-time position. And, and even for companies that don't use their internship as this, this testing ground for future hiring, it gives you such incredibly great experience that's directly related to your field that, that's gonna give you a leg up when you're interviewing and, and applying for those positions. So we would really love to see all of our students do some sort of experiential ex, um, uh, opportunity while they're here. And that might be an internship, it might be a micro internship, which is more project-based short-term things. Um, it could be it could be student teaching. It can be you know across the the campus. It has a lot of different names. But we would really love to see pretty much all of our students. And I know that's tough. Uh, I know a lot of our students are working part time, and some of our students are working full time while going to school. And so that idea of where do I fit this in is tough. But the more students can start planning for it early on um, and think, oh, I'm going to carve out that, that 10 weeks after my, my junior year, or I'm going to try and get something where I can work a few hours, perhaps during the semester, during the school year. It's usually possible to find something, and I think it's just so valuable. Absolutely. So what are some of the other activities on campus that can help students prepare um, and gain valuable skills and experiences before graduation? I can take this one. Um, so I would say across the campus, there are all kinds of events that are outside of the classroom. Um, and a lot of those right now are virtual um, that bring in leaders from across Kansas City and across the country um, to speak about their experiences and they give students great tips. It's also a fantastic networking opportunity. Um, so something that we highly encourage within Launchpad is to get your LinkedIn profile set up very early. And anytime there's those guest speakers, both within Launchpad, but also within classes and activities outside of Launchpad, go ahead and connect with them. So you're starting to build that network very, very early on. Um, and then there are also lots of programs across the campus that are like Launchpad, where we have um, professional development sessions specifically for our scholars. We have panel discussions with Kansas City leaders. We have site visits. And so if your student is part of any of those organizations, just highly encourage that they get involved with those. We have student organizations too, which I really think is a great opportunity for students uh, you know, find find a group that has shared interests and they bring in wonderful speakers and it's a great way to to learn more about different types of careers, do some networking and, and also have fun and meet people on campus. Absolutely. I definitely agree. I just had an appointment with a student yesterday and he was very interested in robotics and guess what? We have a robotics student organization and so that was a perfect opportunity for me to like 
say like, go join the student organization. It's going to be so great for you. Um, and so I'm excited for him. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree that student organizations um, and just getting involved on campus is, is definitely a key factor in, in success uh, once you graduate. All right, so we're going to shift gears uh, from this um, for, I guess, the professional development related questions. But, and we're going to talk more about COVID-19 because that's something that's very relevant. It's on everyone's mind. It's definitely still here, still affecting us. And so let's talk about some of the questions that we've seen that we've gotten from students and families. So how have the employers within the Casey area handled the COVID-19 changes? Yeah, so I think the employers within the Kansas City area have been adapting really well. So a lot of how we see them recruiting on campus and recruiting our students has moved virtually. With that, a lot of the first round interviews have become virtual. Within career services, we're moving our career fairs virtual. And ultimately, we are still trying to get um, our students in front of as many employers as possible. And moving forward, I think a lot of these recruiting efforts are really good as far as getting students in front of employers and as many as possible on campus still, uh, whereas in-person career fairs just isn't feasible. So we're just moving forward in a virtual format. Have you found that employers um, that typically recruit on campus for UMKC students regularly, you know, coming back every semester, have you found that this number has decreased so far this semester since we've come back with COVID? You know, I wouldn't say that the number of employers that are actively recruiting our students has decreased dramatically. Sure, there's been, a, there's a few fewer. Uh, I would say that we're seeing they're hiring for fewer opportunities. So a company that perhaps in the past might have hired 20 interns and 10 new hires maybe is more in the 15 interns and and seven or eight new hires so there is it definitely is is slower so um and and that's obviously something that we're watching really carefully and trying to to get a better understanding of one of the interesting things that has come up though with covid which is is i think a, a positive is that because everything's virtual, from career fairs to interviewing, we're not really limited to just those employers who can come on campus, who have been to Kansas City. So we're seeing companies coming to our career fairs that we've never seen before. We've, we're seeing companies that, that are looking at our students that are all across the country. And so that's a really interesting shift. And I think in some ways nicely balances so that if we are seeing fewer of our typical companies, we're seeing a broadening of some new companies from new locations. Awesome. And just a, I guess like a side note, um, our Handshake platform, I think one of the great things about it is that it's basically a pool of employers from all over the country because there's so many different schools that use Handshake. And so that's how we're able to often have a lot of these other employers throughout the country to register for our career fairs because it's so much easier for them um, to do so because they're already in Handshake because of some other schools that are nearby to them. And so one other, I guess, positive, and Daniel mentioned Handshake in the beginning, but that's something that our students should really be taking advantage of throughout kind of the changes with COVID and during this virtual era. Um, Handshake's been really helpful with this transition as well. All right, what other questions do I have for you? Let me see, let me see. How have your offices, so the Block Career Center and the main office, how have your offices changed to accommodate the new normal? I'll start this one, Daniel. <laughs> um, um, most of our appointments are virtual. And, and what we're finding actually is most students seem to like it. Uh, students can schedule appointments with us through our Handshake platform and we'll schedule those appointments. They can be done either through Zoom or via telephone. So that's probably the biggest shift for us. And most of our events are also um, uh, held virtually. But other than that, you know, it's, not, it's still the same. We're still open um and and perhaps actually open longer hours because why not um so um 
but we're open Monday through Friday. Our traditional hours are eight until five. Um, we're, we're here, we wanna talk to students individually. Um, we're still hosting events. We're still, we're still hosting career fairs. So um, it's just, it just moved to a virtual platform. Any, anything you wanna add, Daniel? Anything interesting and new? Yeah, the content that we have, maybe a student couldn't make an appointment, so we are starting to create virtual content and we're posting it on our YouTube channel and it's got playlists and we're able to reach a broader audience. We are getting a lot of views on, the, on that playlist as well as we have faculty that are pulling that into the classroom where it might be an online class, so now I can't go present to the students we can still have a present in there and they presence in there and they can still know that we are here to serve them. Yeah. Oh, and I'm so glad you mentioned that, Daniel. And and our YouTube channel, uh, UMKC Career Services, has tons of content on it now. And and some of it's very short and, and just little small nuggets and some's a little bit longer, but a little bit of everything. So I'm so glad you mentioned that. Hey, and and Allison, tell us about your podcast. Yes, so around the same time that we started our YouTube channel, we also started our podcast. Um, in the past two months, we've taken a break because coming back to, to campus um, with all of the different changes and policy procedures and just getting um, back into it, it's, I'm going to say, taken, taken a lot out of us in a way some of the, in terms of time and so we had to pause on our podcast the last two months however we still have a lot of episodes um well i shouldn't say a lot probably uh we have four episodes <laughs> but that's a lot to us you know it's our new podcast um but we're actually going to come out with a new one in october and so far our topics, I mean, they range from um, just kind of what to prepare when you come back to school, resume writing, informational interviews, virtual networking, which is very relevant, and all kinds of things. And our new topic is going to be over our virtual career fairs and recruiting timelines as well. So um, very relevant during this time as well. So we really have content in both offices whether you're a visual person or you're a person that loves podcasts and listening to audio i mean we have all kinds of content recorded live workshops live presentations podcasts i mean it's a lot we're really working hard this semester <laughs> hey um i also i want to make sure that Brittany shares with us some of the really interesting um and innovative things they're trying uh, to make sure that we're providing engaging student services. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would echo what Daniel said about being able to create that virtual um, community and then also being able to record those sessions so that if they're not able to come in real time, they're able to watch it later, which I know a lot of my Launchpad students really, really appreciate since they also, a lot of them have part-time jobs and internships on the side, so they don't always have the time to be there right when things happen. Um, but in addition, in Launchpad, we also have in-person socials uh, about once a month. And um, they look a little different than years past in that <laughs> instead of having one event where we have 125 students, we now have five events with 25 students each event. But it does give our students an opportunity to get together and really hang out with each other um, in a very socially distant, safe environment. Awesome. Which I do think is really important. Our campus is still open. Uh, it, it doesn't look and feel exactly the same, um, but, but we do want to make sure that we're giving students that, that on-campus, in-person experience from a socially distance, safe perspective, but as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I would say as a whole, I think campus is just doing a really good job of of abiding to these policies and, you know, making sure that people are wearing masks and socially distancing when it's needed and things like that. And so our offices are definitely thinking about the same types of things constantly when we're doing events. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, one last question for you before I move into my next topic. What are the future plans that you have for the offices and services moving forward? 
I'll jump in. I think we're learning a lot. And the more engaging we can be virtually, the broader the audience that we can reach. So Tess mentioned earlier that students might be working part-time or full-time jobs. So even accessing our services or attending appointments might be really difficult. So these virtual appointments, students can access them early in the mornings. They might not have to commute clear to campus just to meet with us and talk about their resume. Uh, they can log into Zoom and be ready to go. So I think moving forward, we're gonna keep a lot of this virtual content and virtual opportunities for students so that way we can reach as many as possible. I think so too. And and I do think that a lot of this is still going to be at least somewhat virtual in the spring semester. So short term, we're going to, to continue with this. But like Daniel was saying, I think that there's certain things that we have found work well virtually as, as an option. Uh, I think we'll still have some virtual career fairs because it does allow us to bring in companies that wouldn't typically travel to Kansas City. Um, we know we're hearing from students that the virtual appointments are convenient. Now, we love also to have that face-to-face -face contact in person with students, so we're all looking forward to that. But, but for the students that, that really appreciate the convenience of the virtual, we'll continue to offer that, I'm sure, going forward. Mm -hmm. The new normal, as everyone's saying. Awesome. Okay, this is my last question, guys. Are you ready? This is all about our Rue families. Um, so how can our Rue families help support their student in their professional development? Pretty broad, very vague. I'm happy to jump in. <laughs> I'm happy to jump in first. Um, I took a, I was thinking about this one and I think being curious. This is a really high developmental time for students or exploring new paths. Um, exploring specialty areas in whatever field they're looking into. So be curious, ask questions because it's going to help them explore further and potentially think about things that they might not have thought about yet in making career decisions. I would agree. And, you know, as families, share your own work experience. I know sometimes you come home and you, you just don't want to talk about work, um, but, but understanding that that the more your student understands about the different types of work and what happens day in, day out in that job, then, then they're just able to make more informed choices themselves. I would also say really encourage your student to, to get involved. Get involved with the career services. Get involved with an internship. Um, get involved student organizations and other, other student services here on campus. Um, I, get involved is, is my best mm -hmm. advice. <laughs> I would say this is a really great semester to kind of dip your toes into things if you're a freshman or you're just not super comfortable maybe uh, going out and trying new things with a lot of things being virtual. It's pretty low risk to just pop in some meetings and events and so I, I would just definitely encourage taking those risks um, now and then hopefully when we're back in a, in a non-virtual world it you're just that more much more comfortable going to things. Yeah. Hey, Allison, I'm going to just throw in one more thing. All right. To tag on to Daniel's early and often. Um, a lot of times people, students, families um, don't understand that a lot of companies start recruiting really early. So encourage your student to come in early and often because oftentimes these companies are recruiting for either an internship or a full-time position a full year in advance of when it'll start. And so in order to, as Daniel had said earlier, make sure that our students have access to all opportunities, uh, it just start early. Mm -hmm. And hey, we're going to talk about that in our podcast that will be hey. here in a few weeks. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't even plan it that way when I mentioned that. <laughs> Just had to add that plug, you know what I mean? All right. Thank you guys so much um, for answering all of my questions. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure hopefully our Rue families appreciate it too. Um, I do want to say if, you know, you're watching this recording and, and you find um, that you have additional questions for us that we didn't cover something that you were really hoping to learn more about, 
please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can email, I'll put our email into this video um, so that you have it. You can email us our general inbox, you know, anytime. And we have multiple people monitoring it. And so you will receive a message back from us. So we do really encourage you to reach out to us. You know, we're happy to help always. All right, any, any last words, guys, before we end? Thanks. We're just so glad that you and your, your student chose UMKC. For sure. And one final shameless plug, remind them that we're here. We <laughs> want to meet with students. We want to help send them our way and we are happy to get them where they need to be. Awesome. All right. Well, that's that. Thank you so much. I uh, hope you have a you know, wonderful rest of your day, evening, whenever you're watching this video. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.